Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to uh, just show a quick way to check if failover is working on your load balancing router if you set it up to manage failover. Now, I did a whole video yesterday uh, showing the networking setup I rigged up. It's slightly complicated. It involved adding three pieces of hardware on top of my ISP router. Now, I've kept my ISP router because um, it's actually kind of hard to find a non-ISP router that has the right modem that'll work with my ISP. So for the sake of simplicity, I've just kept that. And on top of the ISP router, I have a um, cellular router that's bringing in 4G connectivity to my network. I also have the center piece of the network and it's just right there behind me is the load balancer. I'm using the TP-Link TLR470T+. Plus. It's a one of TP-Link's older load balancers. Um, I went for it because my home internet is DSL, so it's not very fast to begin with. So I figured I'd get a kind of more basic piece of gear. Um, and when I finally get uh, fiber optic, I can then upgrade to something more substantial then. So I've got the load balancer and the ISP and the cellular go into that. And then the networking happens on the LAN side of that, including a access point. Uh, for bringing out Wi-Fi to somebody who needs Wi-Fi in my house and I'm networked into the Ethernet uh, coming from that. So that's my setup and um, it's working beautifully. But you might you know, be wondering the first week or two of operation, well, hang on, is this thing actually doing anything or is it just passing through my ISP connectivity? If I'm going to the trouble of having a cellular router piped into that, is it actually failing over? Like, how do you know it's working in inverted commas for failover? So just a couple of ideas I wanted to share um, design to, uh, sort of thoughts on that. So one way you can do it is there's a website called whoismyisp.org and you can periodically just check that and make sure this is what I've been doing because it's in its first 10 days of operation. Every six hours or so, I'm randomly just checking going on to who is my ISP. And what I want to be seeing is that it's using for the most part, my primary connectivity. Now I've created a backup rule in the load balancer, a simple backup rule. If the primary fails, bring up the backup. So one, one is the primary. If one, one is down, bring up one, two, one, two is cellular. So I'm just doing spot checks to make sure that in the normal course of events, I'm running on ISP and not on cellular. Now, when it goes to cellular, I can kind of tell because the internet gets a little bit slower. Um, it's not a massive difference, but I can notice it. And sometimes I'll go onto that website just to verify. Now, you could also log in to the embedded web server, the EWS on the load balancer. Uh, it's just easier to do it this way, I find. Now, the second way, if you want to look at this a bit more big picture and say, well, in the course of the last 10 days, for however long the hardware has been up, how much cellular data has been used, well, you can do that uh, very easily. So what you want to do is if you go into your uh, TP-Link's management interface on your load balancer, this is what I have in the TLR470T. It's under status. At the very, very top left, there is this little um, page that's labeled in the menu, traffic statistics. And just take a look at what I'm look at what look at what I'm seeing on my screen here. So interfaces, we have three. We have LAN, WAN one, and WAN two. Now in my setup, as I have it currently rigged up, WAN one is the ISP line. That's the one coming from the router that's under that in a pass through connection as a bridge. And WAN two is my cellular. So that's the four G that's being connected from a four G router into the, uh, into the TP-Link um, as a backup connection source. So LAN, I don't really need to worry about, but what I can see here is you can see for a second, the cellular was just kicking in there with a, with a low connection, and now it's, it's just gone down again. So TX and RX, TX, if you're into um, microphones, you already know this, TX stands for transmission, RX stands for receiver. You often see that written on microphone pairs, TX, RX. So you're looking at the TX rate and the RX rate, um, but really the data you're interested in is gonna be the total TX bytes and the total RX bytes, and really the total RX bytes. So the total RX, RX bytes 
and I can actually sort on that is how much data that interface has pulled down from the internet. So if you look here on WAN1, we're seeing that I have downloaded four gigabytes since this clock started running and I've uploaded 570 gigabytes, 571 now, and that's my whole network, everything on the network, that's the total data use on either side. And I can compare that with WAN2, which is cellular backup. By contrast, I've only downloaded, this is WAN2 here at the bottom of the table, I've only downloaded 14.8 megabytes and uploaded 2.4. Therefore, without taking out a calculator and doing the sums, the, the picture here is that 99% of the time, or for the vast majority of time, the load balancer is pulling and using from the cellular, from the ISP line and cellular. There might have been a couple of momentary failover events that WAN2 kicked in for, um, but it's working as intended. So that's just a quick way to diagnose, uh, if you will, um, your load balancer to make sure if you're using it like I am for failover from a ISP line and onto a cellular line just so you can make sure that it's working. I don't know, go in and check that once a, once a week, once a month. Probably you, you want to do this more often at the start when you've just set things up like I have. You wanna make sure everything's working properly together and the failover is happening. Hope that video has been useful. If you'd like to get more videos from me about everything related to home networking, Linux, tech, and other subjects, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.